Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Alho here with KissAndLog.com. Today, I want to just do a quick demonstration of this Hamtech CC65, which was really inexpensive. I think it's around 65 bucks uh, on Amazon. I'll have the link down below in case you're interested. I've been pretty impressed with this little probe. I found out. Uh, I kind of forgot, I guess, since I read the specs initially, but it's a 20 kilohertz bandwidth limit. And we've been using that on this boost regulator that's operating at 107 kilohertz. So it's been doing okay. But now I've got this Tektronix probe, and we're going to show what this guy does. This is, this is a P6042. Now, it's this amplifier up here it's this amplifier up here is what this guy plugs into and then this guy plugs into the scope okay and that's kind of how they used to do it so if you can believe it this was uh, I think first designed first sold uh, released I it was in the late 60s 68 maybe uh, it's been around for a long time what is that that's that's forever anyway you can find these on eBay. I haven't really shown this in operation because, you know, trying to show equipment you can actually buy today and really affordable equipment I try to. But I wanted to show the ideal uh, waveform because since we're looking at this boost, I just thought, hey, let's show the ideal thing so you can see that it really is the shape that I'm saying it is. <laughs> and you can also kind of see the difference between you know, a really inexpensive meter and a current probe that Tektronics probably sold. I don't know. Uh, their probes today, they're probably a minimum of $1,000 to two or $3,000. They're, or even more, they're really expensive. This guy goes from DC to 50 megahertz, so pretty impressive. But I've had it for a long time. I bought it at a flea market, I think, uh, and I forget which state I was living in at the time, but I've had it for years and years. But I am going to show you today what this thing does. Okay. Hey, thanks for watching. Hope you like this. And let's just get to it. It's going to be a real short video. So uh, I'm just going to say thanks for watching now. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this current probe down below. All right. Because I do think it's a good probe. But. And hey, at 100 kilohertz, it's five times over the bandwidth of this guy. Still kind of hanging in there. Yeah, so it's not that bad. So hey, let's jump in. I'm going to show you, go over this scene real quick uh, for somebody that hasn't seen our setup before. And it will really help you a lot to look at the link of the some of the videos we've done before on this uh, boost circuit. But at least the one just prior to this video, which I'll put the link below, okay? All right, to go over the setup, I've uh, shown this setup, you know, testing this boost converter a few times. So input power comes in here, goes into the, the cables here for the input, and we've got the DC meter here reading the voltage here so that you can see it on the camera when we power it up, and also so I can see what it is just before it goes into the board. So we uh, exclude, we kind of, you know, the, these leads could drop a little voltage, so it's just to get a better idea what's going actually into the board. And then this meter shows me the actual voltage that's coming in here from the output connector, from the output cables, and it shows the current. I've got 20 volts right now, 20.3 volts coming out, and 0.41 amps. And the fan doesn't even feel like it needs to be on at that level. <laughs> so then I just turn it on here. This is kind of the minimum load that I'm going to show you. And this right here will be kind of the critical conduction point, 2.8 amps on the load. It's about 57 watts. So if you can see that a little closer, about 20.3 volts, 2.83. That is the point where we're at the boundary mode or the critical conduction mode. And then this is, you know, the higher currents where we're getting a continuous conduction mode. And then down here is a minimum. So, you know, we're at the minimum, we're about 44 watts or let's see, I think we're going to show you around 25 watts right around there. 
and then a critical conduction mode is right about there right around 2.6 amps around 55 watts and then we'll go up to you know 120 watts or something like that so pretty impressive little boost converter as far as the probes we got the hand tech current probe kind of right here and they're both sharing this little loop that I've got in series with the choke and here's the Tektronix current probe so the current's going in this way in the face of the hand tech and through the uh, Tektronix we're reading both of them and then that little wire right there if you can see it that's where I'm clipped on for the switching node it's where the transistor is pulling it down so there's our two scope probes here's our voltage setup and at low power it's going to be a little bit higher you know at high power you can see that the these leads drop some voltage so we drop down to about 12 volts right there so that's so I can keep an eye on this guy and that's what we're doing so let's go look at the scope another thing I can show you on this current probe you see there's a little ground thing you could put a little um, ground connection so if you do have a little noise that we saw in the hand tech you can actually use this thing to try to ground it because there is a coaxial cable right here and that just kind of helps improve the shielding if you need it and you can see the serial number and so on Tektronix P6042 current probe it's nice to have that on the air on both sides of the probe it says open and closed here like I said it has a little plastic so with the switch on it would kind of look like that that's the switch I broke off that's a little deal so I have to take it apart and replace that it just happened while I was doing this video alright and this is the amplifier this right here is the current per division setting the on switch little light showing it's on and this shows the probes not locked so when you put the probe on now I've broken off my switch here so I have to kinda do it this way but um, so you see it's open there so you see the current probe right there it's kinda open the jaws open You see the magnetic device in there it's Hall effect too but you drop it shows you the direction of the current that arrow is pointing down there and then here's where my switch is broken so to lock it in place I just have to reach in and grab that hole and slide it this thing just broke while I was doing this video I was trying to put it on a large wire it's got a small hole here and I was pushing too hard right here and just snapped it off so now I have to lock it and unlock it this way okay and then it has this little port it goes into and you slide it in there and then you hit the degauss and it degausses it while it's inside there and then you use these things to adjust the DC level on the scope so you can adjust where it sit and then you just use this output it says into 50 ohms and you connect it into your your scope that way it says right here DC to 50 megahertz and it's P6042 so pretty nice little unit okay so we demonstrated this boost inductor and the three modes of operation as far as discontinuous conduction and continuous conduction on the previous video and now I just want to show you the Tektronix current probe how it looks more ideal I've been showing the hand tech because it's just a lot more affordable for most of us and it does give a pretty good window but let me just show you uh, the Tektronix P6042 current probe okay now here let's just plug it in first of all it's got this attenuator it's a 50 ohm coupling and that's what it expects the amplifier expects to see a 50 ohm so it gives a proper input so let's turn that guy on now let me hook it up to our wire and I'll be right back okay as you can see the green wave forms the Tektronix probe and you can see where it's flat here where this probe should actually be flat so um, this waveform that kind of dropped off here and then it looks kind of wiggly here you kind of see right there is about where it should have hit so it should have had about the same uh, shape as this rising edge so you can see how when the transistor is on it charges 
and then when it turns off it discharges and then the ringing happens during this off time during this flat spot here so now with the Tektronix probe you can see a much better representation now by the way the RMS values between the two probes are pretty close uh, the peak to peak value still has a lot of noise on this uh, hand tech now right there you see how it goes into a nice sawtooth and the square wave goes square so you can see the critical conduction boundary mode and now the Tektronix waveform gives a nice triangle waveform and then as we add more load you can see the hand tech comes right up and so does the Tektronix so that's continuous conduction mode and by the way right up in here where we're in continuous conduction mode the current level on the hand tech is a little bit higher and as we hit right there critical conduction mode there the hand tech is still a little bit higher it's probably because of the noise and stuff but they're not wildly off so the hand tech even though for $65 current probe does give a nice idea of what's going on and especially if you know that you know it's beyond the bandwidth and the, it's kind of you know it's not given quite the ideal wave shape you can kind of see what's going on though so it's still I think it's still a good current probe hey thanks for watching guys